Thanks to each and every one of you amazing folks, we finally hit 100,000 subscribers. And once again, thank each and every one of you so very much for helping me achieve this milestone. So for our 100k special, I'll be answering questions that you folks asked about me. One of the most common questions I seem to get is what is my favorite of various different types of animals. Pick your favorite. So first things first, my favorite dinosaur is Giganotosaurus. Someone else asked me why Giganotosaurus was my favorite, and honestly it's probably because of that special with Nigel Marvin. Real OG dinosaur fans know exactly the one I'm talking about. I was pretty young when that first came out, and I've just loved it ever since. I was also asked my favorite of several other types of animals as well. My favorite herbivorous dinosaur overall is probably Lambiosaurus. My favorite Ceratopsian is Pachyrhinosaurus, and my favorite sauropod is Giraffe Titan. My favorite Cambrian animal is easily Anomalocaris. My favorite marine reptile is probably Elasmosaurus. I don't know why, I've just always really liked Plesiosaurus. My favorite pterosaur is Rampharhynchus, even if they're a little ugly. My favorite prehistoric mammal is Megatherium, which is the giant ground sloth. I was also asked who's my favorite paleo artist, and I have to say Fred Weirum. I have no idea what it is about his art that compels me the way it does, but I just think it's beautifully done. If I had to pick a close second, it would definitely be Gabriel Agueto. I've seen few other paleo artists match his realism and detail, and each piece of his artwork really feels alive. I was also asked my least favorite dinosaur, and honestly, that's kind of hard to pick. I have a hard time disliking any dinosaurs, because each of them can teach us something new about a world that's long been gone. If I was absolutely forced to choose, like a gun to my head, I would have to go with Velociraptor. Now, 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 before you get angry, hear me out. The only reason I say Velociraptor is because of how people treat Velociraptor because of Jurassic Park. Many folks are still stuck on this design, and because of that, it's hard to get them to accept the actual current design of the animal. And I think that people's perception on the Velociraptors makes it hard for them to accept any new research. But that's really the only reason I have for disliking Velociraptor. Some of you asked if I have any siblings, and in fact, yes I do. I have two older sisters, two younger brothers, and one younger sister, making for a total of six of us. Which brings me into another question, which was, what is my biggest inspiration? And it's easily my family. My parents and my siblings have inspired me to do so many brilliant things, and they're one of the main reasons I started this channel, because of all their encouragement. I genuinely couldn't do it without them. Aside from my amazing family, some of my other inspirations are some of my best friends. A lot of my friends have always enjoyed my interest in dinosaurs, and they've asked me a lot of questions in the past, and that's part of why I started this in the first place. And from start to finish, many of them have stuck by my side and encouraged me more and more, and for that I'm forever grateful to them. You know who you are. I don't have friends. I got family. I was also asked where my love of dinosaurs stems from. When I was a little lad, about three or four years old, my mom showed me various dinosaur movies, including Disney's Dinosaur and The Land Before Time. It was also around this time I convinced her to let me watch Jurassic Park. And it's pretty easy to see where it went from there. Those three movies are kind of like the basis for my love of dinosaurs. But that's not the only place it comes from. Steve Irwin was easily one of the biggest inspirations in my early life. My love of animals comes from the way that he taught us to love animals. And the love and passion that he had for nature is something that I share now because of him. And it makes me want to teach folks more and more about both extinct and extant animals. Crook! Did you say that? And in the same vein as Steve Irwin, another big inspiration of mine is Nigel Marvin. He's done various documentaries, both about modern and prehistoric animals, including one of my all-time favorites, Prehistoric Park. When I was a kid, I kind of thought he was like the Steve Irwin of dinosaurs, but a little less uh, wild. But don't think that's a bad thing. Steve's wild nature is half the reason I love him. But these two gentlemen are really where most of my love for animals comes from. But whatever happens, this is going to be a cracking adventure. I was also asked what inspired me to make this channel. And aside from all my other inspirations, it was honestly a guy who goes by the name of Casual Geographic. If you watch my videos, you probably also watch his, and he's a huge inspiration for what I do. A few months prior to me starting this channel, I saw his videos popping up on my YouTube. And after watching a few of them, I eventually downloaded TikTok, where I discovered the amazing community of educational content creators. Aside from casual, another big inspiration is Lindsay Nicole. She's another great creator who also recently ventured out onto YouTube, so definitely go check her out as well. After watching theirs and other awesome creators' videos, it inspired me to make my own channel. And here we are a few months later. I've also been asked if I could collaborate with those creators. 
Honestly, you guys seem to want me to collaborate with a lot of creators. And I'll be honest with you, I do it. So yes, in answer to your question, I will do collaborations if other folks also want to do collaborations. If any of you amazing content creators would like to do a collaboration, please email me here. Another question I was asked was how long have I been studying paleontology? I've read tons of dinosaur books ever since I was a kid, but I didn't really start studying studying until I was about 10 or 11 years old. People often ask me how do I study and where do I get my facts from? And honestly, that's kind of a complicated answer. Usually I start on Wikipedia, but I don't actually take any facts from Wikipedia. Now I'm not saying Wikipedia is a bad website at all or that it's unreliable, but sometimes people will go on there and change things to better suit their viewpoint. And while it usually is placed back, sometimes this information can be misleading if someone doesn't know about it. However, Wikipedia articles, especially scientific ones, will usually have references linked with the media. Oftentimes, these links will just link you directly to a paper itself or it will guide you to where you can find said paper. And then using that information compared with other information you've learned in the past from previous papers, you can come to a conclusion. But my facts come from various sources from various different scientific journals. And while Wikipedia is usually fairly reliable, other websites like A to Z Animals and Encyclopedia Britannica are usually outdated or just flat out incorrect and wrong in what they post. And you should not be taking these websites for 100% fact, especially when it seems they're biased most of the time. TLDR, it's just a lot of different sources. With that in mind, another question I get asked is how long does research take for a single video? And it genuinely depends. Some videos I make, I know the topic like the back of my hand, and it makes it much easier. Just stick with me, kid. I know this town like the back of my hand. Hey, that's new. Others I need to do a refresher on, or I just need to touch up a little bit. Some I just straight up don't know a lot about, and that usually takes me about 30 to 45 minutes. And some videos take a lot longer, because there's a lot of research you have to go through, and a lot of it contradicts each other. And the video that probably required the most research was my video on dinosaur teeth. Contrary to that, the most fun videos I've made so far were probably my Jurassic Park read-throughs. I've loved those books since I was a kid, and I love reading through them anyways. Another two questions I was asked is what dinosaurs would I like to see more of in media, and what dinosaurs would I make a documentary about? As for the first question, I'd probably focus a lot more on the Jurassic, because I feel like too many people focus on the Cretaceous these days. As for the second question, I'd probably be fair to all different time periods. Probably like a 12 to 16 episode series with a few episodes in each time period. I've been asked what my favorite hobbies are and probably gaming or reading. Piggybacking off of those, I was also asked my favorite book and my favorite video game series. My favorite book series is The Inheritance Cycle, which is about Aragon and his dragon. And apparently they're making a TV show on Disney Plus about it and I'm very pumped for that. My favorite video game series might seem a little bit basic but it's definitely gotta be the Halo franchise. I've been playing the Halo games since I was just a little kid, and I've loved each and every one of them. To be honest though, I played Halo Infinite on my PC and I had a much harder time using mouse and keyboard than I ever did with a controller. And I got so far into using mouse and key that I wasn't able to go back to my regular controller. So despite them being my favorite games, I haven't played any Halos in a while. Someone apparently wants to know my favorite song, and honestly, that's a very loaded question. I like many different types of music and my taste changes regularly. For example, my current favorite song is Unsainted by Slipknot, but last week it was a song named Clouds by Paper Idols. My point is my music taste evolves and grows as I do and I never have just one favorite song. I was also asked my favorite food. My family is from Guyana, which means we're West Indian, and because of that curry is a huge staple food in my family. So I'd probably have to say my mom's crab curry or my dad's beef curry. But we do have a special dish on Christmas that I just love every single year. That dish is called pepper pot. Pepper pot is a type of braised oxtail with a variety of spices mixed in. It's usually served with loaves of sweet bread which you use to scoop up and eat the meat. Honestly, my mouth is kind of watering just thinking about it. I was asked if I have pets and yes indeed I do. When I was in my early teens, my family got a dog. I didn't really like him at first because I wasn't really a fan of small dogs when I was younger. But over time, I quickly grew to love the little man. And every time I visit my parents, he's always so excited to see me. And my sisters don't like it, but I'm Caesar's favorite. He'll literally hop out of anyone's lap and run right over to me if I just so much as say his name. He is one of the best boys. I only have one other pet, and he's a ball python. He's just over two years old, and he's about four feet long. His name is Pikachu for very obvious reasons. But I will say, my buddy Derek has a knack for just naming things people names. And when I first got Pikachu, he started calling him Little Jimmy. And now about half the people who know Pikachu call him Little Jimmy because of Derek. We do also have a cat here at the house. 
She's not my cat, she's my roommate's, and her name is Inky. And she doesn't like being picked up, so I'm not gonna try to do that, but she is one of the most adorable old ladies. If I remember right, my roommate said she was 13. But she's pretty energetic for a 13-year-old cat. I've also been asked if I'm a paleontologist, and in an official capacity, no, I'm technically not. I wanted to go to school for paleontology, but at the time, a lot of folks convinced me that there wouldn't be a lot of money in it, and I probably wouldn't be able to get very far. I did still go to college, but I went for civil engineering instead of paleontology. I've also been asked a couple times to show more of the mask, and a couple of you seem to have questions about it. This is what it looks like from a side angle. This is the Indoraptor from Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. The mask does indeed have some sentimental value to me. I got it as a gift from my friend Tristan for my birthday back in 2018. People ask me how I see, but this part here is, it's see-through. Um, you can kind of see my fingers in there, my head goes in here, and the mouthpiece is translucent, so I can see through the other side of it, kind of like so. You know, you can see how my fingers are in there. And another question I get is, who am I? Who am I? And honestly, I'm not going to tell you. Unless you happen to be my friend in real life, I'm definitely not someone you've heard of before. Those were most of the really good questions that I wanted to answer. And once again, I'd like to thank you all so very much for your support. Remember to be good people, and I'll see you guys in the next one.